What's good, TMG fam? It's your boy, L, and I'm back. Paranoid. <laughs> What's good, man? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. Listen, man. I don't know, man. A couple of these top tens we be checking out. I just know they monitoring me, man. I don't know if my phone's tapped. I don't know if they outside and... and Disguised vans or whatever they in, man. I don't know, man. I just feel like they watching me. We we getting deep into a couple of these these top tens. This one here, man, is ten things you didn't know about the White House. Oh yeah, this one is definitely gonna get me audited or whatever is gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? But we are gonna still rock out and do it though. So if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, man, and join the fam. All right, let's check this joint out, man. Ten things you didn't know about the White House. Do we really wanna know? Do we really want to know? <sighs> the White House is used as a symbol for the United States government. Though it only houses the executive branch, it is considered the epicenter of U.S. politics. But many people are unaware of the secrets and complicated history of this iconic building. Today, we're exploring 10 things you didn't know about the White House. Hi. The White House was built in 1792 under the supervision of George Washington and Irish-born architect James Hoban. The property encloses 19 acres of land, and the building itself is roughly 55,000 square feet. There are 132 rooms, 35 bathrooms, and six levels in the residence. There are also 130-something rooms, and how many bathrooms? Sheesh. But he encloses 19 acres of land, and the building itself is roughly 55,000 square feet. There are 132 rooms, 35 bathrooms, and six levels in the residence. Just, just a new place to just, just to sit and relax. You know, that's like for us fellas, man, going in the bathroom, sitting down, and and that's where we solve all the world's problems. To so, so to have 32 different spots to do that. In, oh my gosh, man, that's heaven. There are also 412 doors, 147 windows, 28 fireplaces, 8 staircases, and 3 elevators. The White House requires 570 gallons of paint to cover its outside surface. It has 10 rooms on the ground floor, 1 main corridor, 6 restrooms, 8 rooms on the state floor, 1 main corridor, 1 entrance hall, 16 rooms, 1 main corridor, 6 <laughs> bathrooms, and 1 restroom on the second floor. It's much larger than the average US home, which is roughly 2,500 square feet. But then again, the White House is both a home for the first family and a full-time office and operation center for the executive branch. The last major renovation took place in 1940, and it is unlikely to undergo any serious changes in the near future. That's what I was wanting to see. And then you still know, like, the, the underground stuff. And then you still know it's going to be stuff in there that they're not going to tell us. There's, there's places in there they're not going to tell us about. They can't give everybody the whole layout of the White House. Many people are unaware that the White House basement essentially functions like a mini mall. Alongside the Situation Room, where the president what? meets his advisors during a crisis, there is a shopping area beneath the building. It houses a flower shop, a carpenter shop, and a dental surgery, so the president doesn't have to leave the building to get a filling. These businesses are totally self-sufficient and work hard to keep up with the White House's massive demands. Today, the flower shop purchases flowers in bulk and refrigerates them for use in state dinners and decoration all around the White House residence. There is also a bowling alley installed by President Nixon in 1969. There had previously been a bowling alley in the West Wing built for President Truman in 1947, which had been moved to the old executive office building in 1955. After the Recording Industry Association of America suggested that the White House Library should be expanded to include sound recordings, that trade group donated over 2,200 LPs during the Nixon and Carter administrations. When Ronald Reagan took office, the collection was moved to the White House basement, where it is still located. Recent research has uncovered that the majority of laborers responsible for the construction of the White House and other buildings in the U.S. Capitol were slaves. On wow. 25th July 2016, First Lady Michelle Obama gave a well-received speech amid what was otherwise a contentious night at the Democratic National Convention, during which she asserted that the White House had been built by slaves. The remark was a relatively minor detail in Mrs. Obama's larger commentary about progress in the United States. However, some people have a hard time accepting that the White House is the result of such a cruel practice. The fact remains, slaves did much more than build the White House. They also worked there over the course of seven presidencies, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, Jackson, Tyler, Polk, and Taylor, 
all owned slaves while living in the White House. In fact, slaves were launched at the White House far past its construction. Jefferson was the first to bring his slaves, a dozen of his household servants from Monticello, to 1600 Pennsylvania. After Jefferson, Madison brought slaves from his Virginia estate, following the building's destruction during the War of 1812. That's tough, man. That's tough to hear, bro. That's really tough to hear. 12. Slave labor was also used to rebuild the mansion between 1814 and 1818. This is a dark part of US history, but it is important to confront all the same. And that was a real saying by him. Definitely dark, definitely hard to hear, definitely all of that, you know what I'm saying? But like he said, you, you, you have to know your history. You know what I mean? You have to know your history and you have to confront that history. So definitely I, I agree with what he said just then. Part of US history, but it is important to confront all the same. <laughs> Working in the White House may seem incredibly cushy, but when it comes to food and drink, the presidential home isn't always a garden of roses. It turns out that even the leader of the free world doesn't get a free lunch. Although the president's rent and utilities are entirely covered thanks to American taxpayers, their groceries absolutely are not. There's a long-standing idea the president is expected to pay for many of the same expenses the average American does. While the house is paid for, normal Americans have to buy their own groceries, and so does the president. The good news is there are extremely talented chefs on the White House staff who turn those groceries into incredible meals. In addition, the White House has its own beer. The Obama That's something that I had heard about, and this video confirms it. They got their own beer? <laughs> oh, man, y'all wouldn't want me to address the public at certain times of the day. Oh. The presidency marked the first time alcohol was brewed in the White House. The honey ale is made using honey from beehives on the South Lawn and is sessionable even when Congress isn't. Of the 132 rooms in the White House, three of them are kitchens. In addition to the main kitchen, the White House also boasts a pastry kitchen and a family kitchen in the executive residence for casual breakfasts and meals that the first family can enjoy together. All of these services are paid for but the rest, like food, cosmetics, and toothpaste, come directly out of the president's salary. It's not uncommon for presidents to have pets in the White House. The first White House dog to receive regular newspaper coverage was Warren G. Harding's dog, Laddie Boy. Pets also featured on presidential elections. Herbert Hoover got a Belgian police dog, King Tut, during his campaign, and pictures of him with his new dog were sent all across the United States. But more than dogs have lived in the White House. The wife of John Quincy Adams, the sixth president, had silkworms. Herbert Hoover, the 31st president, had an opossum. And Calvin Coolidge, the 30th president, had a raccoon named Rebecca that walked on a leash. Theodore we just gotta be weird and extravagant, don't we? We just gotta be weird. Just gotta be over the top with it. Roosevelt, the 26th president, was famous for his many pets. His six kids had snakes, dogs, cats, a badger, birds, guinea pigs, and more. When Roosevelt's son, Archie, got the measles, his brother, Quentin, thought a visit from the family pony might cheer him up. So Quentin put the animal on the White House elevator and brought him to Archie's upstairs room. <laughs> president Donald Trump bucks this tradition as the first POTUS in about 150 years to have no pets at the White House. He is certainly in the minority, as virtually every other first family has had a pet in the White House. Oh, no. The most famous address in America, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, is also perhaps the country's most famous haunted house. Presidents, first ladies, White House staff members, and guests have reported feeling ghostly presences, hearing unexplained noises, and even running into actual apparitions. The ghost of Abigail Adams, John Adams' wife, has been seen numerous times heading towards the East Room, arms outstretched as if carrying laundry. In the early 1860s, oh, no. First Lady Mary Todd Lincoln who believed strongly in the occult and reportedly held seances in the White House to commune with the spirits of her dead sons, told friends she had heard Andrew Jackson stomping and swearing through the halls of the presidential residence. The Rose Room, Jackson's bedchamber while he was president, no. is believed by some to be one of the most haunted rooms in the White House. But the Abraham Lincoln ghost is by far the most famous spirit to haunt the White House. Sightings usually place Abraham Lincoln in the Lincoln bedroom and yellow oval room. 
First leg. See, that's, that goes to show you, man. And they always say when when spirits aren't at rest, that's when you start seeing the ghost, ghost like figures and shadows and different things like that. Stuff went on that we don't know about, man. I'm telling y'all. Lady Grace Coolidge, Prime Minister Winston Churchill, and Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands claim to have seen Lincoln. The first families <laughs> have had great fun with Lincoln's ghost and pulled pranks on guests staying in the Lincoln bedroom over the years. The first president to install electric lighting at the White House was Benjamin Harrison in 1891. But he never touched the light switches himself for fear of being electrocuted. This was a reasonable fear, given how crude household electric wiring could be at the time. Electric lighting was installed in the White House in 1891. Few people at the time had enough faith in electric lighting to use it exclusively because its use was barely a decade old. The electrical work at the White House was planned as part of a well-funded project for wiring the state, war, and navy building next door. Harrison was not only suspicious of electricity, he was deathly afraid of being shocked or electrocuted by coming into contact with this new force of nature. I don't as blame a result, him. At times, lights on the second floor residence of the president sometimes remained burning throughout the night. Harrison left the risky task of turning lights on and off to the staff of the president's house. <laughs> reasoning that it would be far better that a staff member receive the shock of electrical current than the elected president of the United States. <laughs> At various points in history, the White House has been open to the public. These days, it is extremely difficult to access the executive mansion, even if you are a government employee. But in 1800, when it opened, the White House was open to the public, who could partake in the presidential food and drink. Mm. John Adams believed that the White House was there to serve the people and even let them graze their livestock on the lawn. This went on until 1814, when the British Army burned the White House and James Monroe installed an iron gate and fence. The Birth of a Nation is a highly contentious film. The 1915 epic pseudo-historical drama reimagines the world with a revisionist take on the American Civil War. It is renowned for being both extremely artistically valuable and deeply racist. The film has been credited with the rebirth of the Ku Klux Klan and has a bigoted plot. However, Birth of a Nation was the first movie ever screened at the White House. The film was facilitated by Woodrow Wilson. And I still have yet to see it. I don't know, man. I'm just, just, I don't even care. I, I don't even care to see it. Nah, I just don't. Wilson, soon after the film's release, after seeing the film, an enthusiastic Wilson reportedly remarked, it is like writing history with lightning, and my only regret is that it is all so terribly true. The White House is one of the most iconic buildings in the world, and yet most do not know the origin of the name or its color. About 200 years ago, when the United States was a brand new country, people began to talk about where the president should live. Should the president live in the north or the south? Should the president's house be a palace like kings live in or a simpler house? While Congress debated what to build and where to build it, the first president, George Washington, lived in three houses. The first two were in New York City. The third was in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Finally, Washington decided to compromise. He picked a patch of land on the Potomac River. Both Maryland and Virginia gave land for the new capital. The land was on the border of the North and the South. At that time, there were no Western states. George Washington named the land the District of Columbia in honor of Christopher Columbus. Originally, the home's color wasn't from paint, but from a lime-based whitewash. The walls are made of sandstone, and the liquid was meant to keep the porous rocks from freezing during the winter. Workers would redo the whitewash to ward off weather damage, so the color always looked fresh. Even though its official name was the President's House, the massive White House was such a landmark that it soon earned the nickname of, you guessed it, the White House. It wasn't until 1901 that Theodore Roosevelt officially adopted this name. African-American audiences openly wept at the film's malicious portrayal of blacks, while northern white audiences cheered. Yeah. That's tough right there, man. But like you said, you got to confront it head on. You know what I'm saying? You can't run from it. It's it's our history. You know what I'm saying? You can't. It, it, it was what it was. And, and that's why we work so hard today to make sure that we have those changes and 
and we live better lives and and we you know what i'm saying we're a lot better off than what we used to be so but that was 10 interesting things to know about the white house man that many rooms that big uh the the underground things that going up under it the shops the stores the the dentistry up under there i didn't know the presidency had to take care of his own food so that that's that's that was surprising to me. You know what I mean? I thought he didn't have to take care of anything in there, but the fact that he has to take care of his own food was was something new and that I that I learned. I learned a lot of new things in this. So y'all get at me in the comment section, man. Let me know what y'all think. Leave a like, share the video, subscribe, and stick around and stay tuned, man. Until the next reaction, I'm out. Peace. Y'all stay solid. Hey.